Hey guys, Hobbs here again, this time bringing you the Infiltrator Mech. Alright, this is one of my favorite mechs, so this is going to be a lot of fun for me to talk about. So don't worry, I'll give you guys good info. You can always pause here for the mech stats, as always. But, uh, I suggest if you have not watched my Berserker video already, go ahead and go watch that, because, uh, I don't want to have to re-explain all the stuff about the very basics of, uh, uh, light mech combat, so... And I do all that in my Berserker video, so I want to save time and talk about just like the Infiltrator and also the Heat Cannon and EOC Repeater, which will be showcased here. So yeah, if you haven't seen my Berserker video, I suggest you go watch it so you're not lost. But yeah, let's get started. Okay guys, I apologize if there's going to be a lot of info flying at you kind of fast, but you know, this mech is a bit complicated, which is why uh, I put the difficulty ranking on this pretty high, so. I, but as far as like, for beginners, it's not too complicated, but like I said, uh, if you already know how to pilot the Berserker, you shouldn't have too much of a problem. And of course, the starting weapons are very simple to use. It's the assault rifle and the grenade launchers. Pretty much just, you know, like assault rifle and tow rocket, how you, uh, on your CRT, and how you, or like, you know, on the Berserker, like, how you start out the weapons. It's a little bit different. Obviously, it's a bit more suited for slightly more mid-range combat, and, uh, and the way the Infiltrator works as to how it compares to the Berserker is obviously you want to be a lot more sneaky than you did with the Berserker. Berserker, it, it really helps to be sneaky, but you can sometimes, you know, rush in and try to rush somebody down and then, uh, you know, fight on the front line. The Berserker has the ability to fight on the front line somewhat. The Infiltrator, however, really, really less than the Berserker can because of the nature of its weapons. I mean, it only has the assault rifle. Which, you know, it's good for mid-range, but at, up at close range, stuff like the SMC and the Vulcan are just going to tear you to pieces. And you have less health than you do on a Berserker, and you're already a light mech. So, you know, you really do not want to be inside of sustained machine gun fire. So remember, on the Infiltrator, flank whenever you can. Always try to approach from the sides or behind. If you're caught up in the... If whenever you try to fight somebody from the front, you better make sure that you have a buddy with you and then that you're helping them, you know, I'll put a little extra damage. Never try to engage alone from the front. That's just suicide inside of an infiltrator and it'll get you killed. But the ability, uh... Uh, the ability is called camouflage and obviously what it does turns you, uh, almost completely invisible. And it also gives you a speed boost while it's active. And... How it works is it's, it is a bit complicated. It was, while it's active, it slowly drains your fuel, but while it's active, you're always going to be off the radar, and your invisibility lasts as long as your fuel does. So you can boost, dodge, fly. You can do anything but uh, fire your weapons, use items, or initiate repair, and then you'll still be stealthed as long as you have fuel. You can even take damage, and you still won't uh, be decloaked. So. Always keep that in mind. However, like I said, you are not 100% invisible while this ability is activated. Uh, you know, good players will sometimes be able to spot you. However, like I said, it is a little bit tough to spot an infiltrator unless you like know what you're looking for. So it might help to fool some people. But like I said, never approach directly from the front because actually, if somebody gets you in their crosshairs, your mech will be highlighted as an enemy target on their uh, heads-up display. So they will know that you're there. And after that, you know, hey, jigs up. The element of surprise is gone, and the infiltrator is. Well, it's not really infiltrating at that point, it's just, you know, the element of surprise is the infiltrator's greatest weapon, and once you've lost the element of surprise in your infiltrator, that's actually, that's the time where you should just run, because otherwise, the infiltrator's not suited to be out in, like, you know, uh, sustained open combat for very long. It is an assassin mech, after all, so the assassins are supposed to str strike quick, hard, and when the enemy isn't expecting it. If they're expecting you, you're not going to be as effect. You're not going to be nearly as effective as you would have been if you had caught them by surprise. So always remember, don't be afraid to run inside of the infiltrator because it is not meant to you know slug it out with uh, people. It's meant to get them while their back is turned and quickly uh, you know try to and also for finishing them off too. Going over how the ability plays into this, the ability you can use it in a couple of different ways. Uh, you can use it to quickly flank. And like, you know, try to go around, get to an enemy's ra radar, get to their rear flank, and without showing up on their radar, so you can still use your boost and you're not, you don't have to walk there in order to stay off the radar, but you can use your boost to flank around. Or, when you're low on health, you can use it to, you know, you can pop your ability and then quickly try to boost away to somewhere and use it to escape. That's, those, those are the two ways that you can use the, the camouflage ability. You know, and it just really depends on how your playstyle is. I tend to, you know, use it to chase people down, like once I see somebody going away, uh, you know, there's a weakened enemy, I'll usually hit the ability, I'll flank around to not alert anybody, and I'll get behind the enemy lines, and I'll take out that one enemy who had fled from the front line, and get behind the enemy lines using the camouflage ability. That's how I personally use it. And so, yeah, and that's basically what the infiltrator's best for, is for flanking, and getting behind the enemy lines, and dealing damage where they don't expect it. Because, yeah, this mech does not belong on the front line. If you're not shooting people in the back, 
you're doing it wrong, unfortunately, you know. This is not for people who want to, you know, go Rambo and all that. No, this mech is definitely not suited for that kind of a play. But yeah, we're going to be moving on to the next clip in a bit, and yeah, it's it's, in the, it's the next weapon, so we'll get started. Okay, so the rank 3 alternate weapon for the Infiltrator is the Heat Cannon. As I promised you guys, I'll tell you guys a bit more in depth on how to use this weapon. But first, as how to it compares with the Assault Rifle. Obviously with the Assault Rifle, it's got much more sustained damage. However, Heat Cannon often offers a lot more burst damage, which I think fits its role much, much more nicely than the Assault Rifle does. Because the Assault Rifle, you know, you have to you have to stay out in the open for a while in order for it to deal its damage. Heat Cannon, however, you know, one shot, you do, like, you do pretty much like 70, 80 damage with just one single shot when you land it. And so, you know, I think it really amplifies the Assassin Mech's ability, which is to strike quick and hard. You know, uh, I think this uh, weapon really, really uh, amplifies that. But however, this weapon, as I said, is very difficult for mo most new guys to use because they aren't really used to the nature of how, how it works. And, you know, as I said in previous videos, it's got the two modes, it's got charged and uncharged. And, you know, the uncharged mode is semi-auto and it fires, and it's got the, it has the greater damage per second, as in it'll do more damage over a longer period of time. However, the charge shots, they uh, they move faster, they have a bigger splash radius, and uh, you know, they do slightly they do slightly more damage. However, they, they have better burst, but they uh, you know, they take a long time to do and they don't do significantly more damage. I mean, like I said, the uncharged shots do about, you know, uh, I'd say 70 uh, damage and then the uh, charge shots do about 80 damage. So, you know, uh, and the charge and it takes about, you know, 2 seconds to fully charge a shot. So, you can kind of do the math right there and see that the sustain damage is much better when you don't charge your shots. And as far as aiming that, uh, you know, one small tip I can give you um, is that I usually partially charge my uh, heat cannon as in I hold my mouse down, I push my mouse, da mouse down just, you know, to, like, to tell my brain to start aiming. And then once I really want to, you know, actually, you know, and then once I try to, then I lead my target, I let go and then that's where the heat cannon goes. That's, that's kind of how I do it. Although I will usually, uh, although I, another thing like with uh, uncharged versus charged shots, pretty much if I can't see my enemies, that's when I uh, charge up my heat cannon. But if I can see them, I'd much rather use uncharged shots so I can, uh, you know, deal much more consistent damage. You know, uh, but like I said, the charged shots I use for like when I first engage an enemy and I don't see them currently, or you know they're hiding around a corner and I'm still charging a shot and I'm playing defensively. Or when I know that like my enemy's fleeing and I know I can finish him off with just one more shot, and I'll usually charge my heat cannon just to make sure I don't miss. Because like I said, the projectile speed when you charge it is much faster. And also the blast radius, which on uncharged shots is normally, you know, it's pretty small. I'd say it's about the I'd say it's about double the size of like what you'd see a repair charge. You know, it's a pretty small blast radius. However, the charge shots blast radius easily equal to that of a tow rocket. So, you know, it's a really big blast radius. And so, how I would play this heat infiltrator is that uh, it's good for close to medium range. You know, it's obviously a little bit better at the closer ranges because, you know, it makes it a little bit easier because you don't have to lead your targets as much. And plus, you know, because of the slow moving nature of both the, the grenade launcher and the heat cannon. But, uh, you know, I use it for a corner poking, as you see me doing a lot. You see me playing peekaboo most of the time in my, uh, my infiltrator, and so and that's what it excels at. And you can see me just dealing out tons and tons of damage. You saw me take out, like, that scout that was at half health. I took it out with just one volley. I landed my heat cannon, and I landed a grenade launcher. And that's usually what uh, most infiltrators do, is that they'll usually volley their heat cannon alongside their grenade launcher at the same time. To, you know, maximize the burst damage main thing with the heat cannon is that you just gotta learn to read your targets and uh, you know you just gotta get used to projectile speed which you know I can explain as much as I can but ultimately you have to play around with it yourself so you actually you know it, it's not something that can really be taught there's just a feel to it you know it's just uh, I don't know it's just something that you have to develop on your own it's you know I can't I can't exactly teach you exactly how to you know uh, how far you should lead your shots and whatnot. I mean, I could try, but it, it's a little too complicated. It, it's much easier if for you to, you know, if you want to try to learn this weapon, then buy it. But, you know, uh, in the end, it comes down to you and your ability to want to learn this weapon. Because I can tell you this right now, the Heat Cannon took me about a week to learn. A week of, like, you know, solid gameplay. Or actually more like uh, three or four days. It took me that long to be able to get used to the projectile speed and then, uh, you know, learn how to land shots. 
and you know, e even like uh, the best like heat cannon pilots, don't worry. If your accuracy is still like you know, if you're landing half of your shots, you're a damn good shot. Trust me, you, you're not gonna land 100% of the shots all the time. No one ever does. So, you know, just learn if you can land uh, around half of your shots uh, from your heat cannon, you're doing pretty good. Uh, but like I said, uh, how I'd practice is on the bots. And on the AI bots inside, you know, you, like you see me doing here, I'm fighting AI bots because for some reason they are like psychic and they know exactly when you're gonna shoot your weapons or like your tow rockets and your grenades and they dodge them like perfectly uh, so at times. So, you know, practicing against the bots is definitely something you want to do. That way you can get used to projectile speed and, you know, all of that. And you gotta learn how to uh, deal with both charged and uncharged shots. But the uncharged shots are the ones that are much harder to land. And yes, Heat can is a little bit weak against air targets because then you can't rely on splash damage. You have to do go for direct hits, but it's something you gotta learn inside of the heat cannon. So, but yeah, the heat cannon is great for uh, you know corner poking and you know burst damage. But yeah, we're gonna move on to the next weapon. Okay, so this is the rank five prestige weapon on the infiltrator. It is the EOC repeater, my favorite weapon in the game. And as you know, the heat cannon was my second favorite, but this is definitely my favorite weapon in the game. And it's also the most complicated and hard to use weapon in the game. So. And again, just like the heat cannon, as I said, it's really up to you to want to learn this weapon and practice with it yourself. I can only explain to you so much, and after, even after I explain it to you, you're still going to have to go through the hours it takes to be able to learn this weapon, get used to its projectile speed, and the weird nature of, you know, because it fires three pucks, and then when you charge it up, it can fire up to six pucks and all that. Uh, you just have to get used to the way, the funky way it works. You know, it's just so it's just extremely different from all the other weapons in the game because it's basically a proxy mine launcher, but and like none of the other weapons function like that. They're, it's all rocket launchers and bullets. Like you know, the, it, there's only one other mine launcher in the game, and that's on the Predator. But you know, like I said, it's it's a very weird weapon for most people. But when you learn it, it can do what the heat infiltrator does, but even better. The the EOC in infiltrator has a lot, and I mean a lot more burst damage. As I said before. If you charge a full six pucks and you land all direct hits, you know, because pucks do double damage when you land the direct hits, it's 144 damage alone from just the EOC repeater when you land all direct hits with all six pucks. And then you add a grenade launcher on top of that, uh, any A-class or, you know, a light mech is just going to be hurting. Like you saw that berserker right there, that was me. Just one good full volley, I did like 72% of the damage. Luckily, on the infiltrator, the EOC uh, pucks actually fly at a very similar speed to the uh, grenade, the grenade launcher. So you kind of only have to lead one target. You don't have to lead two, like for the separate things. Because like with the heat cannon, on uh, uh, you it does have a different speed than the grenade launcher does. So but for this one, it's, you only have to kind of lead once. However, because of the pucks, they don't all fire at the same time. They fire, you know, one after the other. You kind of want to sweep the EOC repeater when you fire it, you know, uh, like, you just, like, just watch when you see me play it, if you, like, you know, if someone's walking, uh, perpendicular, or, you know, to the side from where you're shooting, you definitely, you want to sweep in the direction that they're walking, and sort of at their feet, uh, you know, try to aim for direct hits when you can, but aim for, like, the thighs of the mech, if anything, so that way, you know, even if you miss, the pucks still land a little bit behind them, and you can maybe get some mine damage out of that instead of, you know, trying to just, like, land direct hits. But, you know, as always, the direct hits do the most damage. Height advantage also works wonders with this weapon. And so, you know, if you have a bit of a height advantage, that way you can, like, you know, spread the mines out a little bit. But, yeah, uh, yeah. The, how this compares to the heat cannon is, obviously, it won't be as good for, like, o open areas when you're in, uh, you know, caught out in the open because the heat cannon has a lot much more, more sustained damage. The EOC repeater is practically all burst damage, so if you're going to use this in a duel, you better make sure you have some cover, because out in the open, this weapon is just, you know, machine guns are going to chew you up before the next time you reload another volley, so, you know, it's really, this weapon takes a lot of getting used to. You really got to get used to staying by cover and being able to, you know, play peekaboo all day, and so, yeah, but it, like I said, this weapon, you just got to play around with it, and it takes a lot. Just remember to try to, you know, corner poke and play defensively as well. Because it's great, this weapon's great for when people are chasing you because then you know when they're going to come around a corner. And so you can just time it right when they're about to come around a corner. They're going to get a full six pucks and a grenade in their face. So that's just something you got to learn is that, you know, is timing is everything in this. You just got to learn the timing of when people are chasing you and you can work wonders with this uh with the EOC repeater, it just does, like I said, it outputs so, so much damage, I mean, I've done it where the people, they, 
They're always like confused about what just hit them. I told them, I was like, hey, EOC repeater, I got you with a full six, I got you with an entire volley. So, yeah, it'll really mess people up when you learn how to do it right. But yeah, it's harder to play aggressive because the heat can is a little bit better for playing aggressive because of its higher firing rate. But yeah, uh, as I said, but the burst damage on this is just amazing and it's great for when you're getting chased inside of your of your infiltrator. And it's also great for the assassinations because it does a ton of damage. It's, it's like the alpha strike. You strike first in this thing, uh, you know, EOC with a grenade, it'll just severely cripple any mech. And then, you know, you can always just follow up with another EOC volley and, uh, you know, or another grenade, which I find easier is, you know, just try to wait. If you, if you can finish them off with a grenade launcher, it's a little bit easier to do that. But yeah, you do have to learn how to land. I do try to learn to land direct hits because otherwise you're going to be fairly weak against aerial opponents because, you know, uh, it's just like with the heat can. You got to land direct hits for the damage uh, in order to, you know, deal damage against aerial targets. And it's a little bit harder. But yeah, just, again, th this weapon, you just got to play around with it yourself in order to learn. And so, yeah. That's basically the EOC repeater. But, and just to wrap things up, I'm going to quickly go over items and internals. Items and internals are the same as always. Uh, my items are going to be the shield, the detonator, and the repair charge. I'm actually I'm actually added the detonator pretty recently, even though you don't see it here. And then my internals, of course, are the basic deflectors, uh, the evasive device, and the air compressor. Air compressor is always pretty good on A-class mechs because, you know, mobility is always a very good thing on your A-class mechs. But yeah. Uh, yeah, but this was pretty much my guide for the Infiltrator and, uh, you know, ho helping you guys learn the EOC Repeater and the Heat Cannon. I hope, uh, in combination with some of the other videos, that it helped you learn them. And just remember, if you want to play Infiltrator, but you don't want to learn the complicated stuff, then stick with the Assault Rifle. But I will tell you this, the best Infiltrators use the EOC and the Heat Cannon. So, if you can learn them and you want to spend the time, you know, like I said, it took me days to learn each of those but you know for me it was really worth it because i can be really really nasty in my infiltrator now but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this and it was helpful like comment subscribe and all that next time will be the raider but this is hobbs signing off